good evening and welcome. Tonight, we are going to begin reading through this travel magazine called Around the World in 80 Days. Of course, we have an iconic hot air balloon. So like I said, this is a travel magazine. So it focuses more on the traveling aspect of all these places rather than the geography. But I still think that's pretty fascinating. So we're going to go, I'll show you. First of all, look at this. How beautiful. We are going to go around the world in 80 days. So I'm going to break this up into four videos. We're going to start going across the United States, across the Atlantic, hitting up the United Kingdom, Ireland, and Iceland. So let's just get right into it. We're going to skip all the intro here. Start off days one through six is your road trip USA. It is the stuff of novels like Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath and movies like Disney Pixar's Cars, Easy Rider, Thelma and Louise. More than anything, however, when done right, the open road provides a journey of self-discovery and an appreciation of just how big the United States really is. And the quintessential American road trip follows the storied highway Route 66. Actor Will Rogers, America's favorite folksy silver screen cowboy in the early 20th century, drove Route 66 from his home on a Native American reservation in Oklahoma to fame and fortune in Hollywood, and by the repeated telling of his origin tale, earned it the nickname the Will Rogers Highway. Nowadays, the route that opened in 1926 and stretched from Santa Monica, California to Chicago is no longer an uninterrupted path thanks to infrastructure upgrades and the bigger, arguably better, but less charming interstates that took its place. Some sections of the original roadway remain, however, and so does the timeless allure to just get in the car and drive. The logistics, route, and technology may be different, but the dream is the same. Freedom. Whether it's riding high in an RV, top-down in a convertible, cruising via the family station wagon, looking at you, Chevy Chase, or on the back of a Harley, there is no substitute for ambling one's way across the country seeing the sights and meeting people you would not come across in any other mode of travel. Buckle up. The Santa Monica Pier in California juts into the Pacific Ocean with all the confidence of a square-jawed actor casting a smoldering look deep into the camera. This is where the adventure begins. Featuring a historic merry-go-round, a soaring ferris wheel with blinking lights that illuminate the night sky, and retail shops selling everything from kites and Route 66 merch to t-shirts and fishing tackle. The pier is a year-round destination for all things SoCal. Soak in the sun, watch surfers carve gnarly waves, or rent a bike, boogie board, beach chair, or umbrella, and head to the sand. Drive east toward San Bernardino and stop the car for the first original McDonald's museum, which is free. Although the inside is full of memorabilia, history, and giant plastic cheeseburgers, the outside screams photo op. Don't miss the chance for a selfie in front of the original sign, a giant Hamburglar jail, or a life-size Ronald McDonald on a skateboard. Thanks in large part to the Disney Pixar movie Cars, the Wigwam Motel in San Bernardino has become an American icon, presenting the kind of kitschy coolness that takes a road trip from good to great. Stop by to see the three conical wigwam-shaped guest rooms, or go one step further and book a stay. Since you're in the neighborhood, you can also visit the giant brontosauruses at the Rainbow Rock Shop in Holbrook although you might be charged to snap a pic. In Victorville, the Route 66 Museum is an interactive experience complete with photo props to be used in front of an iconic 1960s VW bus or in the model of a 50s diner. 
Crossing the border into Arizona, you'll find yourself in Oatnan, population 43, an old-fashioned western town where friendly burros roam the streets freely, and staged cowboy shootouts by the Ghost Rider gunfighters aim at bringing history back to life. If you happen to drive by during the annual Burro Biscuit Toss, join in the fun and see how far you can throw a dried-out burro dropping that has been painted gold, bragging rights to the winner. Giganticus Hedicus is a bright green 14-foot Easter Island-inspired tiki head at the Antares Visitor Center near Kingman, Arizona. Need we say more? Grab an ice cream soda at Delgadillo's Snowcap Drive-In, and don't be surprised if you get handed a piece of hay when you ask for a straw. At Barizona, outside of Historic Williams, the Wild Ride Bus offers four tours daily looking for black bear, mule deer, bighorn sheep, and bison. After passing through Flagstaff, take the exit for Meteor Crater, where a meteor crashed into Earth 50,000 years ago at 26,000 miles an hour. Swinging through New Mexico, head to Santa Fe, an inspiring hotbed of art and creativity. Take in the sights at the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum. Stay a night or two at the historic Lux and pet-friendly La Fonda on the plaza. Stroll the quaint old town and grab dinner somewhere with live music. In Texas, Route 66 usually goes by the name I-40. For this lake of the journey, pack some spray paint in the wildest colors you can find. Cadillac Ranch, an interactive roadside art installation created by Ant Farm Collective in 1974, features 10 heavily graffitied vintage Cadillacs, circa 1945 to 1964, planted nose down, fins up, in an Amarillo wheat field. Visitors frequently add their own flourishes to the spray-painted cars. Just don't try it on a windy day. There's a picture over here. The car is like a badger. Oklahoma boasts the most remaining mileage along the original Route 66, and although urban centers like Tulsa and Oklahoma City make for interesting destinations, make sure to pull over at some small towns, too. Specifically, make a stop in Claremore, the birthplace of Route 66 envoy Will Rogers, where there is a memorial museum in his name, and in the suburb of Catoosa, where a kitschy blue whale sculpture built by Hugh Davis remains, even though the zoo closed long ago. Also in Catoosa, you can visit the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, complete with Route 66 Diner. Oh, there's the whale, by The shortest stretch of Route 66 is in Kansas. Make a pit stop at Cars on the Route in Galena, which features a restaurant and a gift shop inside an old Canatex gas station with a tow truck out front, just like Tow Mater in Cars. Driving through historic Baxter Springs in the Sunflower State, keep an eye out for the old Crowell Bank circa 1870. It was once robbed by Jesse James. Speaking of Jesse James, on the way through Missouri, take a detour to Miramec Caverns in Stanton and tour the cave where the famous outlaw once took cover. You'll know you're almost there thanks to the 50-plus billboards and barn signs along the way. Since Jesse's day, the caverns have been used for everything, from mining to hosting local dances and Easter services. Up for more than a tour, zip lining and canoeing are also available. Journeying through Illinois, the land of Lincoln, road trippers will find themselves in the thick of America's breadbasket, with cornfields as far as the eye can see. Roll down the window, crank up the music, and put your bare feet on the dash, as long as you're not the one driving. In this neck of the woods, look for Collinsville, population 24,320, and the world's largest ketchup bottle, measuring 170 feet tall. That isn't what road trips are for, we don't know what is. The bottle is actually a cleverly disguised water tower that once sat on the premises of the Brooks Catsup Company. The absence of a matching hot dog stand down below seems like a missed opportunity. 
Luckily, down the road a bit in Springfield sits the cozy dog drive-in, recognized as the birthplace of the corn dog. When you've made it to the Windy City, it's time to park the car at the Art Institute of Chicago and say goodbye to Route 66. It was here where the last remaining Route 66 badge sign hung from a pole off the side of the gallery. Take a spin through the world-class museum of fine art, and don't miss paying homage to American Gothic, the 1930 painting by artist Grant Wood portraying a farmer and his wife in front of the farmhouse. You made it. Of course, if you want to add more days onto this trip, any number of sites on the web can offer additional stops along the way, plus ideas for continuing east until you hit the Atlantic Ocean. If these ideas inspire you, we've done our job. Now it's time for Fair Winds and Following Seas, Transatlantic Crossing. No longer merely a form of transport, cruising between continents became a journey to be savored. Free from land and real-life responsibilities on shore, travelers found that setting sail on a cruise ship allowed them the time and space to relax. These days, boarding a luxury transatlantic liner is the destination, and luxury cruise lines like Cunard, who have the Queen Mary too, Viking Ocean, Princess Cruises, and Norwegian Cruise Lines, name a few, have responded accordingly. What distinguishes a transatlantic cruise from the other shipyard journey, shipboard journeys is the number of days spent at sea. Although a ship can cross the Atlantic Ocean in six to eight days, depending on its speed, cruise itineraries range from a minimum of seven days to a maximum of more than 20, with variations in between depending on the number of ports of call. And in the absence of terra firma, travelers are free to observe the wild beauty of the ocean and contemplate the star-filled heavens above. Perhaps it's even possible to imagine what early explorers must have felt as they bravely cast off from land, not knowing what lay ahead. These days, of course, we do. And the experience usually includes world-class food, drinks, and entertainment. So this is going to advertise cruises. Oh, by the way, this is day 7 through 12 on the ocean. Cruise ships also feature activities designed to enrich, entertain, and delight. For the body, spa services, beauty treatments, fitness classes, personal trainers, and health and wellness opportunities, such as yoga, meditation, saunas, steam rooms, and aqua therapy, are available while for the mind, extensive menus of classes and workshops are on tap. Depending on the cruise, travelers can take advantage of classes in everything from samba dancing, cocktail mixology, gourmet cooking, flower arranging, acting, fencing, art techniques, and casino games, to lectures and presentations by notable authors, scientists, and creatives. Some itineraries focus on a theme, such as science, literature, or games like poker or bridge. Search for the experience that best suits your interests, or consider exploring new ones. Entertainment can be as laid back as relaxing with a good book in a well-stocked library, listening to live music, catching a stand-up comedy show, enjoying live theater, or screening the latest blockbuster movie. Dancing, sports bars, pubs, and poolside lounge chairs facilitate meeting new people or simply hanging out with your traveling partners. The beauty of a cruise, you do you. Pampered pups may also be able to tag along with some cruise lines offering dog-friendly amenities and policies, giving new meaning to the term rough seas. An unexpected perk of the transatlantic cruise may be its price, which is lower than you might expect. Prices are reduced when ships are being repositioned or repoed from one port to another on a one-way journey. This is especially true for long trips. As for when to hit the high seas, the months between April and December are typically the most popular window due to seasonal weather patterns. Now we are in the UK where we're going to live like a royal. This is days 13 through 15. But what's it really like to live in an ancient stone fortress on a hill? And is it true about the ghosts? 
Travelers have numerous opportunities to find out. Castle tours are available across England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Two not to miss, Alnwick Castle in Northumberland, which served as the setting for Harry Potter's Hogwarts in the first two films, and the ghost tours of Craigimos, the most haunted castle in Wales. I'm probably going to mispronounce a lot of things in this section, so apologies. You feel free to correct me in the comments. Uh, my Welsh is tragic. There are also savvy strongholds that have lowered their drawbridges and flung open the doors to their guest rooms for a night, a week, or more. First, we're in Highclere Castle in Hampshire, England. Immediately recognizable as the real-life location for the hit BBC show Downton Abbey, Highclere Castle was designed in 1842 by Sir Charles Barry, the architect responsible for building London's Houses of Parliament and the iconic tower housing Big Ben. Currently occupied by the Earl and Countess of Carnarvon, the castle numbers more than 250 rooms and is set upon a thousand acres of parkland originally created for the first Earl of Carnarvon by 18th century landscape designer Capability Brown. The fifth Earl of Carnarvon, the archaeologist credited with discovering King Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, also called High Clare Home, and the castle continues to celebrate the family legacy in the form of an Egyptian exhibition on display in the cellar rooms. Although it's not possible to book a stay inside the main house, the 18th century London Lodge and 19th century Grotto Lodge are two elegantly renovated buildings on the property available for bookings. And here's Aldery Castle in Inverness, Scotland. At Aldery Castle in the Highlands of Scotland, you will be Laird or Lady of the Manor. Aldery is sited proudly atop the southern banks of Loch Ness and surrounded by a 500-acre estate that includes an orangery, a walled garden, a boathouse, and a lakeside terrace with unofficial Nessie, the famous Loch Ness Monster legend, to look at. As royalty in residence, you will have the three-story baronial castle completely to yourself. A family of staff, including a castle manager, caretaker, local guide, and head gardener, handle all the details of the ultra-lux rental, allowing guests to focus on the finer things like strolling meadows of wildflowers, hiking the moors, chartering a boat, or relaxing by the fire. And here's Warwick Castle in Warwickshire. Inside the towers of historic Warwick Castle, the 14th century medieval Cotswold Fortress, originally erected by William the Conqueror in 1068, sit two elegantly appointed tower suites furnished with heavily draped four-poster canopy beds fit for a king or queen. Vaulted stone ceilings, dark paneled walls, and enormous stone fireplaces complete the expansive suites tucked discreetly away in one of the most popular castles in England. Alternative stays on the castle grounds range from cabins in Knight's Village to glamping options in medieval-themed tents. Tours, live shows with jousting, afternoon tea, and more complete the experience. And here's Glenop Castle in Ayrshire, Scotland. Actually, it's probably Ayrshire. Designed in the Scottish baronial style that combines elements of Gothic and Renaissance architectural detail, Glenop Castle was built by Edinburgh architect David Bryce for industrialist and deputy Lord Lieutenant of Ayrshire, James Hunter, in 1870. <clears throat> Today, the land surrounding the castle is designated by UNESCO as Scotland's first biosphere reserve, a region dedicated to sustainable development. The area also boasts proximity to the Galloway Forest Park and the UK's first Dark Sky Park, sorry, <clears throat> Dark Sky Park, where more than 7,000 stars and planets are visible to the naked eye. Astronomers are on call for those in residence at the castle with an interest in scanning the heavens. In addition to moon bathing, Glenip offers activities such as salmon fishing, foraging, pheasant shooting and archery, as well as classes in photography, beekeeping, and yoga. 
Working with a master perfumer to create a signature fragrance is also an option, along with a host of other creative and athletic Scottish axe throwing anyone endeavors designed to keep guests royally entertained. Then we have Chillingham Castle in Northumberland, UK. With a history that can be traced to the 1200s, the beautifully preserved Chillingham Castle is a historic stronghold in Northumberland, renowned for its royal visitors, battles fought on its grounds, and its ghosts. Considered one of the most haunted castles in England, Chillingham offers tours of its torture chambers, with a bed of nails and stretching rack, and nighttime ghost hunts. The brave of heart can also sleep in the 13th century fortress. Apartments and rooms within the castle and exterior buildings, such as the guard room, courtyard, Landseer apartment, named for the artist Sir Edwin Landseer, who became a frequent visitor to the castle, are available. You can also enjoy access to the formal gardens, lakes, and fountains, woodlands, and grounds. Of course, you won't be walking alone. Spooky. Then, for days 16 and 17, we're going to explore Ireland on wheels. April through October are considered the best months to traverse the greenways and bike paths that crisscross Ireland's romantic countryside, dramatic coastlines, and historic ruins. The best part, it's not necessary to be an athlete to do it. A variety of bikes and tours, guided or self-guided, allows visitors of all ages and abilities to visit Ireland's welcoming pubs and cruise on two wheels or three through the poetic land of Yeats and Wilde, Bono and Guinness. Excursions can last a day or be extended for a week or more. Guided tours of greater distances usually include a support vehicle and luggage handlers, as well as a cycling escort who is knowledgeable about the history and landscape of the area and also responsible for providing drinks and snacks throughout the day. Self-guided experiences will equip DIYers with bikes, gear, and well-planned routes, including accommodations and recommended eateries for bikers looking to pedal at their own pace. Popular cycling routes include the epic Wild Atlantic Way, which is 2,500 kilometers or 1,553 miles, considered the mother of all Irish cycleways. The Loop Head Peninsula cycle route, from 10 kilometers to 90 kilometers, or 6 to 55 miles. Connemara Cycling Route, which is 150 kilometers or 93 miles. The Ring of Kerry, 180 kilometers or 112 miles. Rost River Route, 27 kilometers or 16 miles. Waterford Greenway, 46 kilometers or 28 miles. The Gap of Dunlow. 56 kilometers or 34 miles. Blessington Loop, 75 kilometers or 46 miles. And Limerick Greenway Cycle Route, which is 40 kilometers or 24 miles. End to end rides are also a popular choice, and customized itineraries are usually easy to make with a guide company. Depending on the rider's preferences and abilities, mechanical steeds vary. Options include hybrid bicycles, road bikes, tandems, children's bikes, and e-bikes. And some outfits offer disability trikes and wheelchair transporters, as well as child seats and trailers. A quick search on the web will yield a variety of options. Biking in Ireland offers sustainable, inclusive travel in literally one of the greenest places on Earth. Erin Gobra. And our last stop of the night, for days 18 through 23, we are going to explore the Golden Circle in Iceland. Located south of the Arctic Circle, the country is often referred to as the Land of Fire and Ice. Home to icy peaks, a permanent ice cap the size of Puerto Rico, and the largest glacier in Europe, the EU's northernmost country also boasts 32 active volcanoes, including Katla, considered one of the world's most powerful. Iceland is blessed with dramatic landscapes and night skies that come magically alive with the appearance of the northern lights. 
but it is the thermal energy that steams just below the island surface that provides the country with one of its most prized natural resources. Harnessed to heat everything from roadways, sidewalks, and swimming pools to home interiors, the internal heat also warms naturally occurring hot springs, such as the famous Blue Lagoon. This large outdoor spa with swim-up bars emits otherworldly plumes of steam from its pools of blue-green water, rich in mineral salts and silica mud. Just outside of Reykjavik, the Blue Lagoon is a must-see stop on a tour of the country's Golden Circle, the popular scenic route that winds part that winds past waterfalls and geysers, national parks, picturesque homes and meadows populated by shaggy Icelandic horses. It is possible to drive the 191-mile route in a day, but a slower experience allows time to literally soak in the sights. The three jewels of the trip are Tingvalir National Park, the Geysir Geothermal Area, and Gullfoss Falls. Although additional attractions and activities along the way will tempt you to linger, and we recommend that you do. Tingvalir National Park, a UNESCO National Heritage Site, is a 45-minute drive from Reykjavik and the first stop on the Golden Circle. The area is a rift valley formed by volcanic activity and the shifting of the tectonic plates that divide North America and Eurasia. In this park, you can walk between two continents. It is the only place in the world where the plates are visible above sea level. For the adventurous, guided snorkeling or scuba tours, with dry suits provided as a barrier against the near-freezing glacial water, take swimmers into the Silfra Ravine, a deep crevasse that plunges between two tectonic plates. At one point, snorkelers stop for a quick photo, arms outstretched, hands touching two continents. The unique, exper sorry, the unique experience often earns the ravine a spot as one of the top five diving spots in the world. Game of Thrones fans might also recognize the park from its starring role as a setting for some scenes in the HBO series. A little further up the road and at the opposite extreme is the Geysir Geothermal Area, where extremely hot water at 212 degrees Fahrenheit and steam erupts into dancing fountains 65 to 130 feet high every 6 to 8 minutes. Gullfloss Falls, which translates to Golden Waterfall, is the third stop on the drive, and the attraction that gave the Golden Circle its name. Although not the tallest waterfall in Iceland, it is considered by many the most beautiful. You can see. Can you see? Okay. Gorgeous. Okay. Formed during the last ice age, the falls feature a series of cascades, as well as nearby hiking trails and viewing platforms. Long Yokel Glacier, located in close proximity to the falls, offers opportunities for exploring ice caves and tunnels, as well as snowmobiling. Although the Golden Circle is worthy of any bucket list excursion, the drive is actually part of a larger circle, the Icelandic Ring Road, or Route 1, that loops around the perimeter of the entire island and stretches 820 miles. Extraordinary vistas, small towns, whale watching, waterfalls, dramatic fjords, calving glaciers, wildflowers, and thermal pools await. Well, that is where we stop for tonight. Next, we're going to head to Norway to learn about woofing. <laughs> but um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to continue this series, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. Look at this person hiking in this glacier. Incredible. I hope you found this video to be relaxing and educational, or maybe inspired you to travel. And I hope that you have a good, 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 good.